Hi everybody, it's Mark Schelsch here. This is the Mark Art Show coming to you from Galleria de las Islas in Metro Manila, Philippines. I got a comment that I want to talk a little bit about because it kind of disturbed me a little because it's not how I see things and my vision. The comment was just this and it was a very innocent comment. It was just, just like a friend of mine said about the art scene. It's the survival of the fittest. You know guys, I certainly don't see it that way. I don't see that artists are in a competition and I don't think artists should see themselves in a competition. We can't compete with each other. You know, how do you rate talent? How do you re rate creativity? You can say, oh, you can rate it on sales, but sales are not the answer either because some people like some things and some people like something else. No. Creativity and talent is not about a competition and it's not about the survival of the fittest. We're a community and we've got to be a community of artists and that's really my vision. I believe that we really can take back the art scene. I really believe that artists are capable of being complete, not only a brilliant creative artist but also a competent small business person. I believe that. That's why I do what I do. My vision is to see artists equipped not to just survive, but be equipped to go on and prosper within the art scene. You see, the artists make comments like this. They say a lot of things like, you know, the galleries don't treat us right. Uh, we don't get uh, the right things done to us. Things are always hard for artists. Yeah, but because maybe because people don't take artists seriously, and that is the problem of the artist, not the other people. We as artists need to become really competent at what we do so that people will take us seriously, not just for our artwork, but for how we handle the other parts of our life as well. How we handle our money, how we handle our business, how we take hold of things and see ourselves as a complete artist. You know, just one little thing, artist. I, 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 working in galleries for so long, artists come in and consign work. And when I was a full-time practicing artist, whenever I consigned work anywhere or did a show anywhere, I always had my own delivery sheet. I would write out every painting, the size, the, the, the retail price of the painting, the medium, the title. I would do it all and write it all out for myself. So when I arrived, I had a delivery sheet to give to the gallery. I also made sure my name and address and title and everything was on the back of the painting. And I had always had hangers on the back of the painting. And I used to even put felt pads at the base so that it didn't mark the walls when they hung on the paintings. Because I saw that I had to be competent. But I see many artists come in today and they want to be taken seriously. They want galleries and they want art fairs and so forth to take them seriously and they bring their artwork in and none of it's got a title on the back. None of it's got any, any sizes on it. Nothing's, there's no story. Most times they don't even have hangers in them. You know, and I will say to them, Where, where's the title for this? Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot to do it. Now, if he wants me to take him seriously, wouldn't he act a little bit more businesslike instead of being, you know, really flaky and, and oh, I can't remember and oh, I, I didn't get time and, and that doesn't cut it. So I always make them either take them home or sit down and write the titles and everything on the back when they bring them in. Because I want artists to be competent because I want you to be taken seriously. See, I, I, I mean what I say, guys, when I say I want the inmates to take back the asylum because I think the art world needs to be run by artists. It shouldn't be run by academics and schools and, and galleries and dealers and collectors. It shouldn't be. This is our business. But we've got to be the ones to take it back. We can't have this mentality of the survival of the fittest because that means that we don't care if other artists fall down. We are a community. That's what we're building, a community. So we are all got each other's backs. So we are there working together. I'm not in competition with Austin and neither are you. You can't paint like Austin paints and he can't paint like you paint. So why compete? There's no competition.
There's none whatsoever, and there can't be. We need to see that we need to up our game as artists, become complete artists, not just brilliant tacticians, brilliant craftspeople, brilliant creative people, but also competent business people. We must be able to go in and have all the, th all the things that I talk about, guys. Have delivery receipts, have certificates of authenticity, have other things that we've talked about. Have all these things. Have them done so you are complete. Have an artist pack. All these things. Why? Because it makes you competent as a salesperson, as a small business person, as well as an artist. Now, the other thing that I see is that there's so many artists today find it really hard to have somebody speak to them about their art or talk to them or try and give them advice and, and so forth. And that's what I see myself as a spotlight. I'm the one who comes in and shines the torch in the darkened area. Not to criticize, but to show that some things need to be fixed up. And the story really is that I, I remember I had a friend who had a, a, a kind of a property and lots of different things on it. And I was talking to them one day and they were telling me how beautiful it was. And I'm looking at it and going, this is not so beautiful. I don't think this is much at all. This looks run down. It needs to be painted. It needs to be cleaned up. It needs to be fixed. And I said to this, this gentleman, I said, are you serious? He said, yeah, I, I, it's a beautiful place. I said, come with me. And I, I kind of had opened his eyes. It's like all of a sudden the lights went on. And I said, you know, it really needs a coat of paint and you really need to clean up this and these weeds have overtaken this garden. And his response was, you know, I, I hadn't seen it. And that's the truth. When we are doing the same thing all the time with ourselves, we don't see things. We lose sight of things. We don't see that the wall needs to be painted and someone needs to come and shine a torch on the wall. And then we go, oh, it needs to be painted. Or it comes and shines a torch on the garden and we say, oh, yes, it's full of weeds. I didn't see that. You see, because we get, we get complacent with things and we need mentors. You know, a lot of artists don't like advice. I just said that. And yet, isn't it amazing that the best golfers in the world have coaches, the best tennis players in the world have coaches, some of the richest men in the world have mentors. Imagine that. Rich, powerful men have mentors. Um, uh, Tony Robbins is a mentor to some billionaire and gets paid a small fortune to do it. And I thought, isn't that amazing that a billionaire needs a mentor, needs a coach, needs someone to come along. Why? To shine a torch. To shine a torch in the areas that he's, he's let drop. Little things, just little things. So we as artists, we need someone to shine torches into our life. You know, I have people who speak into my life. I like that. Because they can then pick up on areas that I drop. And we drop things really easily. Especially the difficult things to do. The things we don't want to do, but we know we must do. So we put them off. We put them off. We need to be complete artists. And that's my vision for you. That you become complete, not just in creativity. And see, I don't try and tell you how to paint a painting. And I will never tell you what's right and what's wrong about your paintings. That's not my job. My job's not that. My job is to come along and say, hey, have you done your delivery receipts? Hey, have you got your certificates of authenticity? Hey, have you done your artist pack yet? Hey, are you saving any money or are you spending it all? You know, that's where I see my job is. I am there to shine a light. Okay, but friends, we need to survive as a community, not as an individual. We need the community. We need the artists caring for each other, watching each other's backs, all in it for the one good. And that's what we need. And that's why I do what I do. I want what's best for you. I want us to have a community. We need to be taken seriously. And the only way we're going to be taken seriously is we, as a community, get each other's back and we go forward and say, this is our business. This is our art world. We are the ones who make this happen. And I'm going to talk more about this in, as we get further on the, and the rest of this year.
talk about how we make it happen, the artists. Okay, my friends, I want you to be a brilliant artist. I want you to be incredibly creative. I want you to do work that's never been seen before. I hate copies. I really do. And I was at a, I wasn't even going to mention this, but I was at a, an opening last night and I was stunned to see a Mogdigdiliani painting. Wow! And I thought the guy was dead. Now, shows you where I've been away too long. Anyway, friends, I've gone on too long. I'm not going to say any more. You have a great day. Remember that you are an artist first and a competent small business person second. Look after the community. Watch your brothers and sisters' backs. We're in this for the long haul. We're taking back the community. Okay, friends, you have a fabulous day. You go out there and reach people, touch people. There's people out there who are hurting. There's people out there who need hugs and smiles. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow, and in the future, I'm going to come and visit you in your studio somewhere on this planet I'm going to visit. Okay, my friends, have a fabulous day. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.